Hello, my name is Nicole Tate and I'm the Principal Bassoonist of the Queensland Symphony Orchestra. In this video I'd like to talk about embouchure and breathing. Embouchure is an integral part of making a good sound. Your basic embouchure on the bassoon is to curl your lips slightly over as if you're about to say the word bassoon. So I'm going to demonstrate. They're just curled slightly. You don't want them too curled over around your teeth. Just a little bit. A good way to practice your embouchure is by crowing the reed. I'll show you. It's not a very pretty sound, but it is actually when your lips have even pressure around the reed, that is what you want in order to blow and make an ideal sound. And it gives you the flexibility to play really low, to play in the middle and to play really high. The other thing that you can do is to practice with a pencil. And just by having the pencil in your mouth and trying to hold it horizontally, make note of the, the muscles that you use. So it's very similar embouchure to the way we would hold the reed in our mouth. Another thing we can do to practice, and I quite like the idea of doing a lot of practice away from the instrument. So number one is to crow. I always get my students to crow as a warm up and then I get them to play it on the crook and the reed. And I think if you, it's much easier to get a lot of air through the crook you're practicing your embouchure at the same time. Now, if you're blowing correctly, the pitch that you make on the crook is about a C sharp. So practice that and then go to the bassoon. These small exercises will help build up a strong embouchure that will help create a really beautiful sound. Everyone knows how to breathe. We do it every day, all day, without thinking. So why is it so such a seemingly difficult thing to do when you put an instrument in front of you? I think the answer is in the question. We just get rid of the instrument for a start. I've got a couple of exercises that I'd like to talk through, so I'm gonna turn around for you. Posture is integral in this as well. If you're sitting correctly, then your body is able to breathe the most effective way. So I've got my feet on the ground. I can feel that my hips are in the right position because I can feel the bony bits of my bottom. I just want you to practice by sitting there with your hand on your belly and just breathing really gently and normally through your nose and notice what happens. So what you notice is that your belly as you breathe expands a little bit and then as you breathe out gently it goes back in. And now the second exercise, you can do that again, still breathing through your nose, but take in more air and just notice what happens. So as I breathe in more air, I have a bigger expanse of my belly and you will also notice that your rib cage will start expanding as well. It'll expand on the sides, you might even feel it at the front and a bit at the back. And then as you exhale, everything deflates again. Again, try and keep it as normal and as natural as possible. Now, breathing through your mouth, your body knows when it needs more oxygen and it knows how to do that in the most brilliant and effective way. And that is by yawning. When you are deprived of a bit of oxygen, you yawn. So let's use that as an exercise. As we're breathing through our mouth, imagine yawning without yawning, although probably will do that anyway by accident. And what happens is that your throat opens up at the back. And now I notice everything expanding as I take that breath in. And I don't know if you noticed also the sound. If I take a shallow breath, you can hear it as kind of raspy. But if I take a deeper, more open breath, it actually sounds like a deeper, rounder breath as well. So try some of those exercises at home. It really is about noticing what your body does naturally. The other thing to take note of, that's breathing in, but breathing out or blowing out through the instrument. 
we need a lot of air to play the bassoon. So as we're breathing out, blowing through, you will notice that the, the tummy goes in, the tummy goes in almost getting sucked back towards the spine again. And that is your core muscles. They are the core muscles that give you the support that you need. And ideally, this is where all the work happens and the rest of your body is relaxed to play well. When all of those things, your posture is set up correctly, when you've got a strong embouchure and a stable embouchure and your breathing is working, you'll, be, you'll make these fantastic sounds on the instrument. You can make big sounds and you'll be able to make small sounds, but it will be all controlled. Now that's some of the more technical aspects. Um, potentially less exciting aspects about learning and practicing our breathing but there are more fun ways again away from the instrument so I've got these fantastic toys here like this one I love this one it's it's such a pretty little breathing toy even just something as simple as one of these windmills and getting that going Something like a pipe, one of these things here. Something else that's even cheaper and, and a bit more practical is practicing on the crook again with a ping pong ball. Cheap um, with, your, with your crook. So whatever you do, don't let go of the ping pong ball before you start blowing. So blow the crook first. Let's see if you can catch it at the end. All of these detract from the instrument and this is what we want. We want our focus to just be on blowing and notice what your body does. So have some fun with some of these exercises. Get yourself a ping pong ball, even a balloon, maybe a little windmill. Uh, and getting it away, it, it detracts from the actual instrument. And you'll be so surprised at how easy it is then to go from practicing even just with this ping pong ball and the crook and then putting it back on the instrument um, and blowing and making a big round sound. Good luck and have some fun.